Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha. Welcome to Condo Insider. We're on every Thursday from 3 to 3.30 talking about matters related to association living. Tomorrow is an important day, March 2nd, is the first decking at our legislature that means that on any particular side of the legislature, the House or the Senate, bills that are going to remain alive have to be all through all of the committees that have been assigned to them. And as I told you last year in 2017, we had 157 bills introduced affecting condominiums. Because it's an election year and a money year, we only had 30 bills introduced this year. But I can tell you as a first decking tomorrow, there are only three left. So we'll see where they go. We'll do some shows about those in the future. But for me, who's a lobbyist, I can tell you that it's, it's, a, it's a much easier year than typical. But we do have some very interesting matters before the legislature in association living. Speaking of the legislature, one of the issues has always been education, education, education. What can we do as an industry to let our board members and our owners know about solutions and things that are available to them uh, that they can go to to help run their associations better? So I asked a very good friend of mine, Ken Cantor, who's the uh, executive director for the Douglas Trade Shows, who does the Property Management Expo every year in the Blaisdell, and the show happens to be next week, to come down and talk about opportunities for all of you volunteers and all of you homeowners to find out great creative education and solutions that are before you. So Ken, welcome to the show. Thank you, Richard. Great to be here. I always ask our guests to take a minute and just tell us about your background. I know you have some background in the theater, so I don't know how that relates to expos, but... Well, there is a connection. I mean, trade shows are show business, and I got started in the <coughs> theater business in New York and the management side and ended up here. I ran the Manoa Valley Theater for four years, and uh, one thing led to the next, and I've been doing trade shows for 24 years now. Wow. So. How long has Douglas Trade Show been around? I've heard the name a long time. Douglas Trade Show started in the early 80s. I think we peg 1981 as the actual beginning. And it's, it does six shows. I do two shows for them, one for the condo and buildings management industry, another one for hotels and restaurants. And then they do four others for gift jewelry and apparel industries. And is there a Douglas? Doug Williams. Doug was my partner for 24 years and was my mentor. He passed away two years ago, but he started the company, he created the shows, and he was my backer when I started out in the industry. And when you have one of these shows, you, 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 you hold this, it's called the, the first name is the Property Management Expo? Is the, that? The, the, the full name, and it's a long name, but it works, it's Hawaii Buildings, Facilities, and Property Management Expo, and this is the 11th year. And what is the objective of that show? Who, who is your audience? Well, the audience, hopefully, and it's worked out pretty well, are individuals who have the responsibility for maintaining and operating existing buildings and structures, from the university and the airport to high-rise condos to shopping centers. We're not trying to reach the developers or those that are planning to build. We're talking about the existing infrastructure. So if you have a major building and you're concerned about maintaining it and issues maybe regarding governance like in a condominium, then this would be kind of your Absolutely. audience. Absolutely. And for example, we have five companies exhibiting out of 245 that focus on all of the mechanical issues related to elevators. And the interesting thing is you have a legislature that passes various kinds of statutes and legislation that change the requirements and the rules and policies regarding how elevators run. So it's a constant changeover. And that's where the education comes in. And so, I know, wild well, guess, but about how many people go through this show? Over the two days, it's a two-day show, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., and it'll be this coming Wednesday, March 7th, and Thursday, March 8th, and it's free. We get about 3,400 people from all facets of the existing buildings management and maintenance industry. And I know the answer, but and where's it located at? Where's the Dell Center Exhibition Hall. And parking? Parking is $6. Uh, per day, 
goes to the Blaisdell, plenty of parking, and we start our seminars. We do 26 seminars. They begin at 8 a.m. in the morning, and then the exhibits open at 9 a.m. each day. And what type of booths do you have? What kind, what kind of participants do you have on the show? Uh, I know you mentioned elevators. If, but. if you can imagine a need of any kind of building, we probably have someone exhibiting to address it. But everything from contractors who do painting, concrete repair, renovations, remodeling of, of buildings, the elevator contractors, um, pest control, fire alarms, uh, the technology that goes into energy management, submarinering, billing, uh, every aspect of security of maintenance, of new technology coming on the market. We have an exhibitor this year that's just joined us called subletalert.com. They have a website and they track the potential of rental units being subleased by renters to other renters as vacation rentals. Some of that does violate uh, condo laws and violate uh, marketing laws and state statutes. And then we have uh, exhibitors that uh, provide um, information on how to use the, the educational services, Community Association Institute, uh, BOMA, Building Owners and Managers Association, IRAM, Institute of Real Estate Management, CCIM. They are all what we refer to as our association co-sponsors, and they represent all the aspects of the property management industry. Well, most expos have sponsors, so I mean, let's, let's give them credit for what they're doing because it is a great yeah. educational tool. Who are the sponsors? We have. Show? I'm going to read them off because I don't want to miss anybody. I but can we have. That. We have ten sponsors each year. Um, we have GP Roadway Solutions, which has safety products. They have a subdivision Peterson Sign that does all kinds of sign work. Embassy Carpets upscale carpets for hotels and for commercial buildings, for condominium buildings, the, the uh, common areas of a building. Uh, Hawaiian Telcom is uh, one of our sponsors. They're focusing on the issues of switching over to fiber optics in the, in the buildings, which are more efficient, at least from their point of view, more efficient for uh, condominium buildings to distribute um, cable services. Um, Hawaii Unified, which is maintenance and uh, all types of services in maintaining and contractor services for buildings from electrical contracting to painting. Um, we have a company, a new sponsor this year called Cookstop, and they have a product that allows kitchen, fi kitchen fires or kitchen stoves not to catch fire by monitoring when they're not being maintained by someone in the room. So if a stove is left unattended, it will shut down. And that's one of the biggest problems in fires in high-rise buildings is unattended kitchen cooking. Um, we have uh, uh, American Electric, major uh, electrical contractor here in Hawaii. Um, we have Ohana Control Systems that specializes in parking, uh, parking lots and parking uh, control equipment as well as security systems and surveillance equipment. We have uh, Alana Buke and Burrs, which is an engineering company. They assist buildings in every aspect of remodeling and renovation. Uh, Premium Incorporated, which is cleaning and chemical products and cleaning equipment. And uh, not the least of which is Associa Hawaii, a company that you're very familiar with. Associa has been supporting us now for about seven years. And some people know they're, they're a managing agent. They help yep. manage homeowner and condo associations, and I'm affiliated with them. And uh, I know we're very proud to be a sponsor. But you know, even though you listed your 10 sponsors or so, um, about how many exhibitors are there in this booth? There are, there are th 300 booth spaces, each roughly 10 feet by 10 feet, that are occupied by 245 companies, some of them by multiple space. But many of the companies also represent other companies. They're distributors or manufacturers or they're parts of conglomerates. So probably on the Trade for show this year, you can actually connect with about 500 companies doing all kinds of services. I think it's interesting, you know, I think I was mentioning to you before the show, I was uh, 
working with a client on a reserve study, and I was at a big 500-unit condominium association. And I started going through the reserves, which is obviously generators, elevator rooms, electrical rooms. You go on and on, and the, the number of components, when you start looking at one of these larger buildings, it's a huge business. It's a, it's a huge task and responsibility. And what I've experienced from your show is I walk around, something that may not be foremost in my mind, it triggers some thought while I'm there that, you know, I should take a look at this and, and, and get some more information. It's, it's, well, a trade show itself provides that because exhibitors are there not to just tell you what they do and trying to sell the products or services they have, but they're all also looking for feedback from the marketplace as to what's needed. So there is an exchange process going on. But when we started the show, we didn't have a real handle on exactly what the show was going to be. We knew we wanted to focus on existing structures. What we found out is probably the main maintenance of all the different types of buildings and facilities and structures in Hawaii is probably a larger industry than any other industry. It's just not identified as an industry in any traditional way. We have tourism, we have construction, but the maintenance and operation of the existing infrastructure is huge. Now do you see, I hate to say it, but do you see representatives of government coming down we do. Like the city Actually, and the county we do. and the state? Because the state's got a huge infrastructure issues you know we invite we invite everyone at the city state and federal level in Hawaii who has any responsibility for maintaining facilities or addressing issues and statutes and we get them it's difficult at the legislative level because we're in March and everything's going on but we do get um, representatives from government and we get representatives from the, the bureaucracy that have responsibility for building maintenance, for the roads, for the electrical system. Uh, Hawaiian Electric is one of our exhibitors. They've been with us quite a while. And as Hawaiian Tel is, is a utility. So everything is, is for the continued operation of our broad infrastructure. Now, from my experience, you know, one thing I like about the show is that when you're looking at a particular issue, say windows, you get to talk to three or four vendors about yeah. the problem. So you're not no. getting a single like marketing presentation. You're getting to see different people's take on a particular issue and how they might recommend you solve it without any pressure of a sales and making a deal. It's, you get a, get a chance to get a lot of education without you know, much, pr much pressure being put on you. Well, you, you also get a more focused exchange because people who are in the exhibits are there to talk to the individuals who have responsibilities for maintaining buildings and facilities of all kinds, not, nece not necessarily just uh, single family homeowners. So it's a more um, detailed, more intense discussion. And they're gonna be as interested in hearing from the attendees about what their needs are as the attendees are trying to get information out of them. And so if they want to go to this show, you said it's free. Yeah. Can they go on both days, by the way? If they yeah. want to go both days, are they limited to one day? Or? No. The show opens uh, the seminars again. We have 26 seminars. They start at 8 a.m. in the morning, run all day. Uh, they're free. We do have a, a few meal functions where there is a charge to attend, but they're also excellent educational sessions. Um, at 9 a.m. each morning on Wednesday and Thursday next week, we open the exhibit hall, and it's open until 4 p.m. And it's open to anyone interested in coming, uh, anyone who has a responsibility for a building such as a, a condo board or maintenance people or resident managers or the engineers and the maintenance people, uh, which we feel are the ones on the front line of keeping the buildings going. And it's free. You can get a badge when you arrive. And uh, we also give away six trips for two to Las Vegas and a number of free trips to the neighbor islands. So there's a lot of activity going on, a lot of excitement. And some people spend the whole day there. Well, I want to ask you some more questions about that, but we're going to take a short break for a minute. And we'll be right back with Condo Insider talking about Hawaii's largest property management expo. Good afternoon. My name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii, we show at 3 o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guests are specialists, both from here and the mainland, on energy efficiency, which means you do more 
for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. Hey, aloha, Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. This is the place to come to think about all things energy. We talk about energy for the grid, energy for vehicles, energy in transportation, energy in maritime, energy in aviation. We have all kinds of things on our show, but we always focus on hydrogen here in Hawaii because it's my favorite thing. That's what I like to do. But we talk about things that make a difference here in Hawaii, things that should be a big changer for Hawaii. Uh, and we hope that you'll join us every Friday at noon on Stand the Energy Man and take a look with us at new technologies and new thoughts on how we can get clean and green in Hawaii. Aloha. Welcome back to Condo Insider. We're talking with Ken Cantor, Exposition Director of next week's Property Management Expo. It has a longer name than that, but I'm going to keep it a Property <laughs> Management right. Expo because it's way too long for my senior years to remember all that. But let's just re review briefly. We were talking about it's a free show, parking six bucks at the Blaisdell. It's next week, Wednesday and Thursday. Yes, right. Seminars begin at eight. The bo exhibition booths open at nine. Is mm -hmm. that correct? And we have lots of exhibitors. Um, but they can come down without any registration yes. and register at the show. They, they don't have to go through some preliminary no. thing. If they just want to, I got time in my schedule today, bop on down there, yeah. they can do that. You can, you can go to our website, douglastradeshows.com, and see all the seminars. You can even register for a badge, but it's not mandatory. We do require badges to be worn when you get into the exhibit hall, but they can pick up a badge at the on-site registration counter when they arrive. It's free of charge. Now, I seem to remember you give me a whole bunch of little coupons today. Yeah, As I, I go around and drop them in these different colored boxes. Different colored boxes. I might win a oh. trip to Vegas or neighbor islands. or People or, do win, and uh, there, we, there are six trips for two that we give away to Las Vegas. Um, Vacations Hawaii provides, though. We're very, um, very happy that they're involved. And uh, it encourages people to walk the show floor, deposit a... Uh, entry, they're personalized, so they have their names on them, and they can also visit the exhibitors around them. I'm very forgetful. As soon as I get in the show, I went around and do all the boxes first, right. and then I go take my leisurely time around. Otherwise, I'm going to forget, and I want to make sure I have a chance to win, although I haven't won yet, you know, but I guess odds are one in three or four uh, thousand, I they're, guess. Well, they're not too bad, considering we have, what, 3,400 people and six chances to win. So I wouldn't say those are great Vegas odds, but um, people do win. Well, I do know. I see you're always announcing and awarding <laughs> them, and, and uh, that's great. But, you know, one of the things I think that shouldn't be overlooked about your show, and I'm very prejudiced about this <laughs> point, you have some outstanding, incredible, dynamic speakers in your seminars. Yes, we do. We have one in particular that we're very proud of. He does uh, uh, seminars on reserve studies. Oh, I guess that's you, Richard. Uh, somehow, I'm sorry. I don't know how we figured that <laughs> yeah. out. You know. And uh, we this year we're doing. Uh, as I said, 26 seminars, uh, everything from fire safety, obviously that, that issue is a, a critical issue that's come to, to everybody's attention this year. Uh, we have them on uh, the issues of condo boards, responsibilities for finances. We have a gentleman from Morgan Stanley who's going to be talking about the statutes, the state statutes that relate to how condo boards can invest their funds, and which is fairly limited, um, but there are some options. We have um, a um, two seminars, uh, one on uh, security systems, the technology of security systems, which is changing every day. Um, there's no way to keep up. And then another one on the new controls uh, for parking lot revenue control, Ohana Control Systems is doing it. And that's getting sophisticated as well, where you can, you know, you can go on your cell phone and find a parking space anywhere downtown without having to drive around. But that has to be managed and controlled, especially if those parking stalls are also part of uh, the, the use of the 
tenants in the building. And that kind of technology is, is just changing every day. Well, I think if people went into the website or got your brochure and they looked at the 26 seminars you have, they have some incredible topics. I happen to know, I think his name is Travis, who's doing the, yeah. uh, is doing the one on the financial. Not, no. A lot of boards don't know, besides the traditional bank CDs, you have something called CDARS, yeah. ICS. There's different ways you can legally invest with yeah. principal protected instruments. And you know, a lot of time you don't think about it, but a difference between 2% and 1% in your investments makes a big difference with respect to your earnings mm -hmm. and your reserve study. So I find some of the seminars are absolutely really interesting depending on what your issues are at your association. So well, tell me about some other seminars. You well, I, I try and pick subjects by talking to professionals in the industry, seeing what's, what's relevant. And we're doing one um, on what's referred to as arc flash hazard. Uh, control where the electrical system in a in a building could put out an electrical arc flash that and I found this very difficult to, to believe as hot as 30,000 degrees wow. Fahrenheit in less than a microsecond and it can it can vaporize everything in the room and this is the in the top 10 dangerous types of accidents that OSHA tracks in the United States. And in buildings like we're seeing today, huge buildings, where the, the electrical power system is very complex, it's a serious problem and it has to be watched. And what we're finding, what's interesting to find is who's coming to these seminars. They find them and then we realize we're reaching a crowd we had no idea we're reaching. So you have the, the insurance market is attending it, the condo boards are attending it, the maintenance and resident manager people are attending it because they all have the responsibility of understanding the problem. Well just so I can put my own little commercial sure. message in on this that you know because I'm in the association management industry I see lots of board members and owners of associations at these seminars. I know Community Association Institute actually does a lunch in there yeah. one day. Tell us a little bit about that. This year they're doing one on the whole issue of fire safety, but they're bringing in not only experts in the in the safety issues, but the fire department. And it's really a panel discussion that is going to bring everybody up to date on what what the statutes are and what's going through the legislature right now. So it's real time and that's on Thursday. It's a luncheon on Thursday, starts at 11.30 a.m. You do not have to be a CAI, CAI member to attend. There is a fee, however, but it's an hour and a half session with a full lunch. Well, I would encourage people to go to that. I was on uh, one of the subcommittees of the Residential Fire Safety Advisory Committee I know this month there's a couple of bills before the city council with respect to providing some financing or tax relief for homeowners and condos, but I think the March session has the, what I call the big dog in the yeah. room and whether it's going to be mandatory uh, sprinkler retrofitting and, and I know uh, uh, the fire chief, I've talked to him many times, he's quite knowledgeable and well spoken about fire yeah. safety issues. But I do want to take a minute and, and promote my three seminars. Absolutely. Just because uh, every year I've had the privilege of doing this, and I would tell people that uh, they're quite popular to the extent I see two to 300 people in these seminars, and not just mine, but seminars at the show, because the quality of information is there, generally speaking, throughout the entire seminar. And I do my traditional seminars, which is on Wednesday, I have 8 a.m., and I'm doing one on a legislative update where we stand this year in the legislature, but also the general direction on a strategic yeah. level of where the legislature is going, what kind of bills are being introduced, what kind of concerns the legislature have, and where the industry is kind of going in future. Then at 10 o'clock that day, I have one which is uh, ironic. It's called Peace and Harmony in Condominiums. <laughs> it talks about, you know, how do you have a peaceful, harmonious living environment? It goes back to, again, how we treat people and how we govern and what the current laws are, what the current thinking is to resolve disputes. And then on Thursday, I do one on modern thinking and reserve studies. Mm -hmm. And basically, it's centered around the concept that if you think about it, and you have wastewater pipes, and all the architectural reference manuals say they have a useful life of 50 to 100 mm -hmm. years. Well, how do you pick in your reserve study 50 years or 100 mm -hmm. years? Because the effect is very dramatic in how much money you have to put in. You have 
twice as much time to do it if it's 100 years versus 50 years. And so there's a whole lot of changing in the thinking of how you do reserve studies today. And uh, having the background of reserve studies and the certifications nationally for doing reserve studies and, and also having written several of the laws here in Hawaii, I give a kind of an uptake on where this is going so that boards can better manage and plan this. But even though I've promoted my own seminars in a way, I think in general I would say to you, your seminars are really high quality. You have really good speakers. Thank you. When, when you and I first met, we talked about education and and how it would serve the market and serve especially the condo boards which are have the responsibility to manage a multi-million dollar business so everything related to the education that we try and provide in which you helped create some of it is to facilitate the condo boards the the volunteers, the ones that have to keep an eye on what's happening in a building, to realize that they're running a multi-billion, a multi-million dollar business, and the ability to do it efficiently and effectively and creatively raises property values, and that's how it works. And the thing I would want to emphasize about the seminars, from my perspective, no one's trying to sell anybody no. anything. No. It's strictly educational on the issues, pros, cons, risks, rewards, industry issues. It's not a sales pitch. We have a. We we have a very strong policy to not be putting on infomercials. And if it goes in that direction, we, we change it. It should be information that everybody can share, that, that is helping everybody to move along. Yeah, I think that's generally well said because I've been involved in your seminar for several years now. And uh, not only as a speaker, but as a, uh, helping through being a sponsor or a booth participant. And I found that to be one of the most meaningful chances for board members and owners to in a natural, relaxed, well-run environment, walk around, talk to people, get information, where they have an interest, attend seminars that are very valuable to what they're, what they're, what they're trying to deal with. I'm frankly surprised at the end of my seminars, I typically have to hang around for 30 minutes or yeah. more answering questions because it creates this interest in how they can run their home and their association better. It's, it helps drive the show, but it also helps create the environment of coming down and spending a few hours, not just looking at products and services, but relating to people in the room that you may not have met before, who have the same problems or trying to solve the same problems you are and gaining the education. So I, I really appreciate your doing it and you were very instrumental in giving us a focus on how to do that well. Well, we're at the end of the show, so I'm going to ask you to remind everybody where it is, the dates and the times, how to register and how to show up, and then we'll wrap it up. <laughs> okay. I think that's the camera right there. Um, Hawaii Buildings, Facilities, and Property Management Expo is Wednesday, March 7th, and Thursday, March 8th at the Blaisdell Center. It's free, produced by Douglas Trade Shows. You can come on down and attend the free seminars and see over uh, 250 companies occupying 300 exhibit spaces with product, services, and equipment to help you manage and operate your building or facility. Well, thank you for being here, and I would uh, tell everybody I encourage you to go. It's a, it's a great show and a lot of great seminars, and hope to see some of you at my seminar. This wraps up this week's Condo Insider. Next week, we're going to have Jane Sugimura back, and we're going to be talking about a hot topic called priority of payment. As you know, when you pay maintenance fees, those are applied in a certain order and creates unintended consequences and problems. And there's new laws being promoted this year. So next week, we'll be back with Jane Sugimura talking about priority of payment issues. And thank you for watching Condo Insider. Aloha.